So we are, um, this is a little bit out of order. We're jumping to section uh, chapter seven. So our notes, we're starting at the back of page 43, same note packet. And we'll come back and do chapter six, don't be alarmed. And the directions, I've, I've picked out these three problems because the directions for all of them say to use substitution. Okay, this is easy stuff. Do you remember how that works? Get one of the variables alone. It doesn't have to be x. It has to be one of the variables. And I would always recommend getting one by itself, if you can, getting one by itself that doesn't have a letter attached, or excuse me, a number attached to it. So I would never try to get this y by itself. I could get this x by itself or this y by itself, but I would never try for those because if there's a number attached, you're going to end up with fractions, which is fine, except we don't like fractions. So, if we take Olivia's advice, take this equation right here, and get x by itself, that equation will say x equals 4 minus 2y. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Then we'll take this guy right here, and we'll plug him in for the x in the other equation. Mm -hmm. yep. So, we'll have 2 parentheses, 4 minus 2y, minus y equals 3. We'll distribute 8 minus 4y minus y equals 3. Collect like terms, 8 minus 5y equals 3. Subtract 8. So negative 5y equals negative 5, so y equals 1, yep. but we're not done, are we? No. Because when we're solving a system, there's two variables there, so we know y is 1. Now we need to figure out what x is, and that's real easy. I like to go back here to my circle right here where it says x equals and if I know y is 1, if I put 1 in there, what does that say? x equals 4 minus 2, which is 2. two. So the answer to the problem is 2 comma 1. Remember, when you're solving a system of equations, you're looking for where they cross. These two lines cross at the point 2 comma 1. If you were to graph these two lines on a piece of graph paper, you would see them crossing at the point 2 comma 1. Is that ringing some bells, folks? Remember that stuff? All right, now let's look at the next one. It's the same thing, but it's got a squared in it, so it's going to be a little bit more arithmetic, but the process is the same. And in fact, isn't this set up beautifully for substitution right now? Mm -hmm. Directions say substitute. So that top equation, if I plug this in, is going to say x plus x plus 1 squared equals 5. Everybody okay with that? Now that's a FOIL. That's a FOIL. So we're going to have to do x plus 1, x plus 1. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No shortcuts there. That is a FOIL problem. I know, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a lot going on in this problem, but what you need to zero in on is it's a quadratic. It has an x squared. So we're going to get it set equal to zero. So we got an x squared. Now one, two, three x's. Now I've got to move this over, so that's going to be minus 4. Remember, quadratic equations, we get set equal to 0. 
and then we either complete the square, quadratic formula, or factor, right? Does that guy factor by any chance? Negative. Yep. Negative one X plus four minus one. Actually, no, we can have negatives here. We, we can't have negatives when we have, um, like if it's perimeter or something like that. But when we're just looking for where they cross, they can cross at negative places. So I'm going to get two answers here. X is negative 4 or X is 1. So I have two ordered pairs as my answer. One is negative 4 comma something, and one is 1 comma something. Right? Now, I'm not done. I'm going to take that negative 4, and I'm going to put it right here. If x is negative 4, then y would be negative 3. And then if x is 1, y would be 2. Now, wait a minute. Why are there two answers to this? Does that it's make sense? It's a quadratic. This guy right here, if you graphed him, if you graph that equation, it's actually a parabola open and sideways. This is a line. Does it make sense that there would be two places that the line and the parabola could cross? Absolutely. All right, one more substitution. All right, so what do you want to do here? Add the y over, so we're going to take this equation right here and we're going to add the y over, so x equals 4 plus y, is that all right? x equals 4 plus y. So now I'll plug that in for my x here, so 2y minus 2 times 4 plus y equals 7. Why did I say 7? No, three. Because I'm a moron. How about 3? Does that sound better? Why did I say 7? I mean, don't feel bad. 7 is a lucky number. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. So 2y minus 8 minus 2y equals 3. Add the 8 over. Add the 8 over. No, well, it's a whole number, so shouldn't it just go Yeah, on? that's fine. I can add the 8 over, and that's going to be 11. But over here, I'm going to have 0, aren't I? Mm -hmm. uh, Wait a minute. What's going on here? You have two lines up there, like just like we had here. Two lines that we were looking for where they cross. These don't cross. These lines must be parallel. They don't cross. There's no solution. There's no intersection. So you can write no solution. You can write no intersection. You can write parallel lines. Doesn't matter. They all mean the same thing. These things have no points in common. Okay? All right, so that's substitution. Everybody good? Next test we take, one problem is going to say solve using substitution, <coughs> and you're going to have to do that. In fact, there's probably a quiz in our future that's going to say solve using substitution. Then there'll be a question that says solve using elimination. Now, do you remember how that one works? Exactly. So an elimination problem is right here. This is number two. Now, let's be real clear, folks. Could this be solved using substitution? Sure. In the real world, no one's going to care. If you have to solve a system of equations someday in your life, no one's going to care. But in math class, we're trying to learn both methods, and actually we're going to learn a third method. You're going to learn a brand new one. But we need to know all three methods because some problems are easier using one or the other, or some people just like one or the other. Myself, I'm an elimination freak. I don't substitute unless I have to. 
ever. I always eliminate because it's easier for me. But on the quiz and on the test, solve using substitution, solve using elimination, solve using Kramer's rule. Those are going to be the, the directions, which you don't know that one yet, I don't think. All right, so we're going to eliminate here. What's your plan? Uh, multiply the bottom by three. Multiply the bottom by three. <laughs> Are there other things you could do? Absolutely, but this is sure the easy thing. So I'm going to leave my top equation the same, and I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by 3. So 15x plus 3y equals, and this is where we sometimes screw up. you got to multiply this by 3, too. Everything's got to be multiplied by 3. All right, the whole purpose of that is when you add these together, that gets eliminated. So 17x equals 85, mm -hmm. and x equals 5. But we're not done, are we? Got to plug it back in. Got to plug it back in because, again, we're looking for the point of intersection. So we know x is 5. So I don't care which equation you come up to. If I use the top one, I put in 5. It says 10 minus 3y equals 13. You can put it in either equation. It doesn't matter. So negative 3y equals 3, and I guess y equals negative 1. You okay with that? Number four, x squared minus 3y squared equals negative 11, and 2x squared plus y squared equals 6. Now, all kinds of wild things can happen here because you're intersecting a hyperbola with an ellipse. So they cannot intersect. They can intersect in one point, two point, three points, or four points. So we don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to have to see. Can we eliminate? Absolutely. Uh, what do you want to do? Three. Mm. Three. Okay, I'm hearing some people say let's multiply the top by negative two, and some people are saying let's multiply the bottom by three. It doesn't matter. Since I already multiplied the bottom by three, I'll multiply the top by negative two in this one. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you want to do. Negative 2x squared plus 6y squared equals 22. Did I do a good job with that? So 2x squared plus y squared equals 6. Mm -hmm. 7y squared equals 28. Y squared equals 4. And y equals plus or minus 2. When you take the square root of both sides, you've got to do the plus or minus, right? Wait, we are not done. We have to find x. We already got y. we got to find x. So I'm going to go right back to this equation right here. It says 2x squared plus 4 equals 6. I put negative 2 in here. So 2x squared equals 2. x squared equals 1. So plus or minus 1 if I put in a negative 2. Now what if I put in a positive 2? Is it the same thing? Could be. Kids, what's 2 squared? 4. Same as negative 2 squared? So how many points of intersection did I have here? 4. 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, and negative 1. So 4 points of intersection. Okay, we will pick up here next time I see you, which Lord knows when that is.